The good news, news is, though, it looks so pretty, right? That blanket of snow, fresh snow across northeast Wisconsin. Our Sky View 2 drone gave us the glance of that pristine picture. Look at how pretty that is. Yeah, it does look pretty. Yeah. And then plows hit the streets. Many of us grabbed our shovels. As Nolan Blair explains live in Grand Chute, all the snow brought out some smiles and folks as well. Nolan. <laughs> Bill, you're right, the snow certainly did pile up, but today photographer Bill Kumbalik and I set out to see the prettier side and talk to folks who enjoyed a last taste of winter. It's a beautiful day and just what you want to do in April is go snowshoeing. It's a little breezy, but it's gorgeous. Look at this, look at the sky, how the light hits the snow. It's it's all right, man. I remember snow showers in April, but I'm not sure that it was this big. You can't beat a spring day with a fresh Wisconsin snowfall. It is what it is. We usually come out here and look for wildflowers, but today we decided to look for snow drifts. There is something special and magical about going into a woods and being just coated with snow and all the trees hanging low with the white snow covering on top of them. We're here for the winter. Bring, bring on spring, but uh, this is a great winter day. One last chance. It's been a beautiful day and I'm ready for spring. And still no word on when spring will arrive and stay, but as you can see, Wisconsinites keeping a positive attitude through all of this. Reporting live in Grand Chute, Nolan Blair, Action 2 News. This Kikona landmark getting a facelift thanks to a team that is not afraid of heights. New at 6, Emily Matesic and Skyview 2 give us a bird's eye view of the makeover. Standing more than 140 feet tall, it's hard to miss the Kakana Water Tower. A 5,000 gallon tank, it's one of two in the city that supplies water to residents. But it's what's happening on the tower. It's just amazing to see them guys hanging off the side on cables and stuff. That's drawing a lot of attention. It's pretty amazing what they're doing and I was just mentioning how I saw them welding up there. And that's crazy on a, on a windy day to be doing that. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Nearly 20 years after its last makeover. We had this out of service in 2000. That's when what they did is they overcoated the outside. So realistically, there's two coats of paint on this tower now. The tower is about to get a fresh look thanks to VNT painting out of Michigan. Because we have lead based primer on the outside of this tower, they have to completely encapsulate it in a tarp. It's a job not for the faint of heart as the workers construct the brackets to hold those tarps on top of the tower while teetering off the side to prepare it for the paint job too. I'm glad there's people that are willing to do that because I wouldn't do that. I mean, they're up there in baskets and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of safety goes into it. You know, they're tied off and stuff, but still it's, it's a dangerous job. Over the next 120 days, a team of five will work to transform the tower that when completed will welcome people into the electric city. Kakan is known as the electric city and we just kind of want to get that out, you know, kind of promoting that again. At a cost of $450,000, the makeover, which can be nerve wracking to watch, should last 25 to 30 years. In Kakana, Emily Matesic, Action 2 News. For a million bucks? That's what I was just going to ask you. A million dollars would no you do way. it? I wouldn't either. Not a chance. No, not nope. even for like five minutes. Stay right here. Yep, that's, <laughs> I'll be poor. <laughs> it's an EF1 tornado destroyed a barn and damaged trees about two and a half miles north of Kiel near the Calumet. Manitowoc County line 90 mile per hour winds from that storm also caused damage in New Holstein and EF1 tornado also touched down between Brandon and Waupon near Alto and Fond du Lac County packing winds at 100 miles per hour. Nola Blair now joins us live from Fond du Lac County in Waupon to give us an up close view of the damage caused by the tornado there. Nola. Bill and Cammy, the viewers that were with us at four may have noticed the right side of the structure was still standing, but since then it's been torn down as they continue to pick up on this farm. The National Weather Service says the 100 mile an hour winds from the confirmed tornado has the strength to tear up structures like these. 
Our Skyview 2 drone gives an aerial view of the damage caused by the tornado. The National Weather Service explained its path like this. Just on the other side of Highway 49, and then that moved across uh, an area of corn that you can see is completely laid down, uh, and then really, unfortunately, slammed into this farmstead. Pebble Knoll's dairy owner, Dick Wetzel, says this damage is devastating. Of his 600 plus cattle, five are dead and around 20 are injured. The rest were moved to other farms. Just cleaning up the disaster, that's what it is. Total disaster. Uh, we lost basically three, three barns. Skyview 2 shows the damage to those barns. The dairy owners say it won't stop them from rebuilding. We'll get cleaned up and start over, I guess. That's our only option. The National Weather Service is continuing to survey a wide area for tornado touchdowns. It says this powerful storm left damage from Juneau County all the way to Sheboygan. Within that, there may be some embedded tornado circulations within that larger swath of straight line winds, but uh, really a tremendous amount of, of damage across this area. I spent time with an insurance group in the village of Brandon this afternoon. They told me that claims are pouring in as people deal with the damage from this storm. Reporting live in the town of Wapan, Nolan Blair, Action 2 News.